Hi guys, so we're going to look at heuristic review. Now, what does that actually mean? When we create a UX design, when we improve a product, uh, we want to make sure that it's we've done a good job. We want to review it and make sure that we met certain requirements. Now, there's this amazing guy by the name of Jacob Nielsen, a Danish um, UX design consultant, expert, lecturer, um, he's like the godfather of UX design. And he came up with 10 points that create great UX design and UX design experiences. Um, and that criteria uh, is one of the ways we check that our design is good. So a new design uh, or the redesign of a product or a brand new design, we should check these 10 things. So, so the first one is visibility of status. That means that you should know uh, pretty much straight away what this website does. Uh, you shouldn't have to think about it, it should be really clear and give you feedback when you use something that you know where you are, what you're doing and how to use it. So that's the first thing you need to check that can users, and you do that with the user research, asking users was it easy uh, to use our website. The second is match between system and the real world. So. Uh, when you when we work with the developer, when we work with the technical people that actually code in our design, uh, they can be, lead to differences in what you drew or what you sketched or what you used a uh, wireframing uh, software for, and then what the developer creates could be quite different. So we need to match it with the real world and make sure that the language that we use. Uh, on the website is what people understand. So it's not terminology that's technical or difficult to understand, but simple words and, and plain, simple language that people can follow. So um, for example, you would, you would say sign up or sign in rather than giving them a word um, that they don't know. Um, what they don't use in, in, in normal daily language. So you'd always look for something that they would understand, be able to use. The other one is user control and freedom. Um, and that's about users when they browse a website, uh, they should be able to go pretty much anywhere they, they feel um, uh, they want to go on the website and they have the freedom to click things. Imagine, have you ever been on a website and you try to click something and it doesn't click? It's quite annoying. Um, so you need to give them that freedom uh, so they can move around, browse, navigate, and they, they have that freedom. So there's no, uh, pretty much as much as you can give them the freedom with limited limitations, if you get what I mean. So yeah, they, they can't do everything and anything they want, but they do have that freedom. Consistency and standards. Now this is really important. You do not want a website or pages that are all different. So every color is different, fonts are different, the styling is different, the branding is different. So keeping things consistent um, is really key. And one of the best examples of consistency is the UK.gov website. So the government websites are all very consistent. Even though they have over 600 services, they keep the branding and components, uh, the buttons and things very, very consistent. Um, Error prevention is another way he wants us to check, uh, is that there's no bug. So as you become a UX designer, as you work in the real world, you will realize that um, you need to test your product and you do that with the developer and you see if there's any bugs or any signs unexpected or pages that are crashing or text that's coming up uh, that shouldn't be there or images not showing up, things like that. Um, you want uh, the next bit, the sixth one is recognition rather than recall. That means that you won't be able to people to recognize your website uh, so they can automatically go to or, or instinctively go to where they want to go. So they don't have to think about it too much. Uh, for example, if you're used to going on eBay or Amazon, you pretty much know how to search very quickly, and that's recognition, not recall. Recall is you have to think about it, where is it, where do I need to go, and you do not want that to happen. Um, the next one, it, the seventh one is efficiency of use and flexibility. Now that means that um, the website functions effectively, efficiently, it's fast, it's smooth, it's seamless. The touch points, i.e. throughout what you're doing, let's say you're buying something, each touch point is easy, it's easy to follow, it's, there's not too many steps, it's simple and efficient for users to use. Um, 
The eighth one is something Apple does really well, aesthetically pleasing and minimalistic design. So keeping design simple and uh, really, really pleasing. So they, they, it's nice to look at. So that's when we do the flowery pretty design. So UX design isn't about pretty things, but it is as well. But it's one of the aspects of what we try to do. Um, we the other the ninth point is helping them when they have a problem with our service or product so can they find the help button quickly are they able to recover from a situation where they, they can't check out anymore or there, there's there's requirements in the form to fill in and they don't know where to where to go or what to do next and they just leave the page which is last thing that you want and then number 10 is help and documentation is there the appropriate documentation in an easy to follow format to uh, for the user to use for example uh, macbooks um, have a really good help option if you're using a macbook their interface is designed to easily find help so you've got something like spotlight which pops up and you can type in what you're looking for very quickly that would be a good example of good ux design i hope that helped that's 10 things you can use to review a ux design um, that you can use in the real world don't forget to subscribe and follow the whole uh, series of videos on one ux one we are here to help you become a successful ux designer take care thank you guys